Hi, this is Blue's book night. And I just kicked my books that I pile books I have down here over. Oh, my entrance, my smooth entrance. And I'm chewing, I stole one of the, my son's um, um, Swedish fish. You know, I'm, I'm still a kid at heart when it comes to candy. I do love candy still. Why? I'm way too old to be eating candy. I love eating it. I mean, I shouldn't say that. Everybody loves sugar. Sugar is just a thing. And, you know, it's, yeah. So, I apologize if there's any candy in my teeth. If you see it, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. He bought them for the movies. We went to go see um, the new Marvel movie, um, Quantumania. And he had... A bag of candy yes I confess I'm one of those people that buy the candy beforehand at like CVS or Walgreens for like a tenth of what you pay from the movie theater and I carry my lovely purse and armed with snacks so he didn't finish it so it was in my purse and I was I went in that purse because I don't always use that one because it's a bigger one and I just saw it and I was like oh, just a couple just a couple so I got my little sugar fix before I came to see you guys it's Friday and the weather is cold. It is getting progressively colder here. You know, I was to give you my update on the weather. Um, we got some snow and ice, and tonight it's going to drop down into the single digits and be nasty, and tomorrow maybe a little snow. And so now we're in winter. It's finally arrived. I mean, winter just wasn't here. It skipped us. It came a couple times and skipped us, and now it's decided that, hey, we forgot them. We got to get them too. So I think next week we're supposed to have now potentially a big storm. Um, big. I don't know. Big defined. Everybody has different bigs, but with a lot of volume of snow, I think on Tuesday or Wednesday. So we will see, which means that basically get your shopping now because the grocery stores are going to be like, people are funny because it's like they, it's a short memory from the last storm, right? We, we realized that I think the stores very rarely supermarkets, which I feel bad for all the supermarket employees, and I appreciate you much more than you know, um, that they are usually open, even after a storm. They may open late. Um, very rarely do they not. And very rarely do the roads get so severe that we can't travel within 24 to 48 hours tops. So if you have enough for food for that, you're good, you know, but I think we all have that that horror in the back of our head that what happens, what if, um, you know, or what if there's a big for power outages or what, you know, so yes, yeah, so I will be going. I have mostly everything I need. I think I need to just get a little bit more milk. Other than that, I think we're good. I think we have enough in the house. So we're good for that. Um, it's good reading weather and hopefully I can get on some reading. Speaking of that, let's get an update on where I am. So I have been reading um, I've been reading for um, Read So Lit um, book club, a book for that, and it's called um, Her Mother's, I always forget the name, let me get the exact name for you, Getting Mother's Body, and it's by Susan Laurie Parks. Um, I finished it, which I'm happy to say, and I'm like ahead of schedule. I finished it uh, earlier in the week. Yeah, I finished that one. Um, and that one is good. I'll talk to you guys more about it after we have our meeting, um, which is coming up in another week, because I really appreciated the last discussion we had because I, like I said, I like to hear other people's opinion because sometimes my opinion can change. And, and that's always what's interesting about the, the journal when I book journal. Sometimes when I have more time away or I'm influenced by other external forces, I may change my my opinion. I've never changed from if a book I just didn't like to that, but I may change my opinion or realize something that I missed that I, you know, overlooked. And that's what happened in this book club. And I was really glad listening to that meeting. Um, we talked about some things that we thought, um, or somebody raised the point of some things that they thought were, uh, poor word choice, word choicing and what did that mean and why do you use that phrase and I thought it was really good discussion and I thought wow the I, and I and I kind of had a blink of that that opinion 
the second time I heard them say the same thing. But then I just, you know, so it's really nice to be able to have other people kind of give you um, more perspective, you know, and I think that that was really great. So I want to see what others say about this book and I'll reserve my comments until then. So hold on for that. And then the other book that I read, and I have that in ebook form, so I don't have the cover to really show you. Um, but then I have this one, which is Mame by Jessica George with this pretty little cover. And I finished this one. And this one, um, I enjoyed. I liked it. I like the narrator on this. And her name, I think, is Heather Neongpo. I have, to, I have to find out how to pronounce her name. I say this all the time. And I said this year I was going to look things up before I get on and talk to you all the, to, the, to remember to to take the time to learn, you know, how people pronounce their name. Because I, you know, I don't like when people mispronounce my name. So, um, so anyhow, um, I thought it was really good. I finished this right before, I think, Valentine's Day. And I thought it was, it was a good book. Um, I thought it was very interesting. It had some, you know, funny parts in it and things like that. And, um, I will talk a little bit, I'll talk a little bit more about these at the, you know, as a wrap up with um, the books, but I, I overall like the book, you know, I thought it was good. So another book that I'm reading, um, and I, I say that, but I don't know if this is really going to be true. And I, and I really don't know. I don't know. Um, this is a buddy read I'm doing with my sister and it's somebody, someday maybe by Onyu um, Nabinelli. Um, and this is the cover. It's really a cute book. And what I really think happened is my sister and I looked at the cover and we were like, yep, going to read it. And then it got a little, you know, plug on Good Morning America, going to read it. And then we really just didn't think about it. Um, I am, I started listening to the audio to see if I could then attach to this better than I was reading it. I am four hours in. I think there is six hours more. So I still have a I don't think I'm halfway through it yet. If I, I have to look, I'm correct. I'm not enjoying it. And so I think my sister's already said, no, she doesn't feel guilty and she's letting it go. I feel like I invested the time, that amount of time that I'm like, should I just keep going and plug through? And what I keep hoping for is that the book is going to change and that there's going to be something else for me to grasp onto that was, will keep me going. And I'm not finding that. And it's not because maybe that this is a bad book, but maybe that I'm not connecting. I'm not the audience that is appreciating it. Now, let me tell you what it's about. So let me tell you, let me just make sure I get the name of the characters right. I forget her name. Does it spell her name? It's about this Nigerian woman. My God, I can't remember her name right now because I just kind of kind of blocked it out. And she finds her husband has killed himself. Um, I believe it's on, I think it's on New Year's Eve or it's on the room holidays. And it's her journey um, kind of processing that grief. And I think the people who watch this channel know me and know that that's probably not a book that I've ever or would have chosen to read. Not that the topic of suicide or any of that or grief is, I'm not, I don't avoid grief. Believe me, we get enough grief in the things that I read. But I feel like um, every time I'm waiting for something to happen. I mean, she's just depressed. She's trying to process. She's trying to figure out you know, what would compel him to do that? And it shows, you know, the people left behind how we deal with the grief. You know, his mother is dealing with, with it a different way than she is. And how do they grieve together or apart? Or how, whose grief is more than the others? Those are valid things to talk about or to think about in a book. But it's just so mundane so like this it's just going along like this and I keep waiting for something else to happen like to pull her out of this or for her to 
find out something. What is it? What caused this? What, you know, was he, was he living another life or, and maybe that is in here after I get past the, you know, hour five or six. I'm just like, but I, you know, and I've never tempted to, but I have been tempted to go and just peek ahead and see if there's something that's going to, so I don't know. I will let you know at the end of the month. I'm really torn. I also, did I put it in here? I thought I put it in here. Which, when I put the title in here, I usually try to commit myself to read it. Like if I put, like start the page. No, I didn't start it. I just put a post-it. So I could potentially, like it never happened. <laughs> and what I will do is I will write it in my book journal as one of the books I was going to read it and I'll just say DNF. And I could, sometimes I put down why and sometimes I just don't. Um, there has to be a reason why this book was a book club recommendation. And, uh, you know, I, I just am not seeing it yet. Again, it might just be just talking about the things I just talked to you about grief and how we internalize it and how we um, use it to motivate, to push ourselves forward um, or not, right? Maybe that's what it is about. And I just, I don't know. So... So I did. I did. I didn't read it. I, I mean, I'm still on the fence of whether I'm gonna pick it up. I've kind of put it to the side right now, right? So I, I you know, we'll see. So I don't want to spend a long time on that. The other book that I had that I'm not reading, and I said this in the beginning of the thing, there the uh, month was like trees walking by Robbie Howard. I did purchase it blindly because it was a read sold it read along for February. There's always a read along, and that's the book. And I. It's heavy. It's about lynching. And it is very important history that we need to understand and, and to everybody should dive into it to um, to remember that these things occurred and to um, mourn the loss for these people and their families. Um, but I'm just between that and this other book, oh my gosh, you know, I is this too much? So I didn't even I didn't even say I was going to attempt that. I said I told Didi I'm just going to keep it and and I'm going to get to it at some point or other, hopefully this year, um, but not now. And then I'll and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to look at here it goes the fee. Um, I'm not going to look at what other people said about it and then I'll read it and then I'll go back and look at it because they will do a video usually to talk about it. Um, so I will do that. So there's that. Um, what else? I talked to you guys about. I had some graphic novels that I talked about that were good for um, for Black History Month. And I did read one. I read this one, which was really good. It was really good. This is James Brown, a Black and Proud. And I actually liked it a lot. And the reason why I think that I liked it um, was it was, you know, like I said, I think that people underestimate books that are, I don't know if this is young adults. It could be either or, but nonfiction, people kind of dismiss the nonfiction and the graphic novels, and I find them very interesting. Now, this one, I talked to my sister who watched a uh, documentary or what do you call it, a biopic or whatever on James Brown, and it starts different, but that's, you know, your different mediums, people will start at any point. You don't have to start always at the same um, point. Um, because this isn't, it wasn't pulled from this, you know, they just took the facts and tried to figure out a way to represent it graphically. I thought it was really um, stunning artwork. I thought the illustrations were fabulous. And I thought the story was compelling and interesting. And I learned things about James Brown that I didn't know about him. Um, and um, especially in the end when they were talking about, you know, how much wealth he uh, um, accumulated, but also really that, you know, they called him the hardest working man, right? And um, show business and it's for real like he produced um, so I don't know I should have marked the page so that I could tell you that those things but I don't even know today any artists that do that that have produced as many albums in a year I think he did like well, I can't find that page he made like five albums you know per year for I forgot how many years like listen we can barely get one album a year from some of these artists. Sometimes it takes them years before they do another one. Um, and they weren't just albums that he just was like throwing out. He kept going to number one and on the top charts and 
he you know revolution revolutionized and changed the way music was experienced um when you listen to him and so yeah i think that um it was really a good book so i'm really glad that i read that one and it was fun it was really fun sometimes it can be fun to read history too so now i'm kind of left with i have um Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. I have another book that, where did I put it? I thought I brought my Kindle in here. I did. I think I did, but I guess I did. Okay. Well, luckily I have iPad. So another book that came in that I wanted to talk about during, and I don't know if I did during uh, talk, when I talked about graphic novels, um, is it's called Queenie, Godmother of Harlem. I put it on hold on uh, my library to get the digital, but I'm I'm leaning towards purchasing this. And if it if I get into this and it it's as good as I think it might be, I will get it because I think I could would like it on my shelf. Um, Queenie is this is Queenie the Godmother of Harlem is by Aureli Levy. Um, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit what it says here about the description, and then I'll show you the picture of it. It says. A historical graphic novel inspired by the life of Harlem's legend legendary mobster, Stephanie St. Clair. Did you hear of Stephanie St. Clair? No, I did not. So I love this. So I don't know if you've heard of her, but I didn't. My husband did. You know, he he's kind of a history buff. I don't know how he heard, but, you know, and it wasn't fake. You know, sometimes people go, oh, yeah, I heard it. No, he was telling the truth. But <laughs> I did not hear of her. And so anyways, it says, Queenie follows the life of Stephanie St. Clair, the infamous criminal who made herself a legend in Harlem in the 1930s. Born on a, plant, on a plantation in the French colony of Martinique, St. Clair left the island in 1912 and headed for the United States, eager to make a new life for herself. In New York, she found success rising up through poverty and battling extreme racism to become the ruthless queen of Harlem's mafia and a fierce defender of the black community. A racketeer and a bootlegger, St. Clair dedicated her wealth and compassion to the struggling masses of Harlem, giving loans and paying debts to those around her. But with prohibition ending and under threat by Italian mobsters seeking to take control of her operations, she launched a merc merciless war to save her territory and her skin. And it goes on and on. What? What? Have you heard of her? No, I have never heard of her. And I am so excited. Like, I'm, it came at the perfect time because I finished those other books with the exception of Someday Maybe. And so I'm all ready. So this is what I'm going to be looking at this weekend and reading. And this is the cover... No, oh, why did it do it like that? Let me see if I can get it like this. Well, oh, this is kind of small. It's a and it's it's oh god, and it's look at look at look look at that. You gotta love it when I do that. Um, <laughs> you know, it just came on a bra ad. <laughs> I don't know if you heard it. Anyways, this is the cover of it like that. Can you see it? Um. Anyway, it it, it sounds so good. So that's what I'm going to be reading this weekend. Um, the other thing that I'm going to be reading for the weekend is um, my ACLU magazine came. And it's got some really good stuff in here that I want to read. Um, one in which one in particular that I'm going to start with um, was um, is the separate. I love and I love the graphics that they do in these little magazines, too. I do. So it's this one. It's separate and unequal. And it's talking about... Um, it says a California school district segregates students of color. The ACLU is suing. So I want to read this because I know nothing about it, but it's about, yeah, this is, it's a pretty good, you know, lengthy article. So I do want to read that one this weekend. And then, um, this is another one I want to read. This one's called standard of care. And this one is talking about care for transgender people. Um, and what the work their ACLU is doing to try to help in that front. So those are two of the ones that are in here that I want to actually make sure I get to before the weekend is over. Um, yeah, we'll see. I really like when this comes and I need to renew my membership because they're going to stop coming if I don't. Um, what's this one here? Hmm. All right, so I'm gonna look at that. <laughs> I'm like reading. Let me. This would, this would be turning into a vlog of me just reading. So I want to do that, and then I have other options. 
should Queenie just be rolling along and I just woo 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 woo? It's actually a pretty long um, graphic novel, but um, should I be plugging away and making great strides that I think that I'm going to definitely complete it before the end of the month, then I might start this one. And this is the other one I showed you guys, um, which is Wake, The Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolt. Or I might save this for Women's History Month because that's women and it's important. And I, I think that's what I'll probably do. Maybe what I'll do is I will read, see this is decisions made in real time. So uh, maybe what I'll do is read Queenie, these articles, and then maybe for some like fun, jump into Far Sector. I really want to read it. It looks so good. Look at it, it looks so good. It looks so good. It looks so good. Look at the graphics. I love that it's like a purple hue to it too, purple and green, it's so pretty. Um, so I might jump into this one. So I'm thinking of this and this and Queenie and we could be good for the weekend. The other thing I wanted to show you because I told you guys and I didn't do it last time was I was gonna show you, um, remember I said I got from Target a um, paint by number. Let me take this out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that is this. Isn't that cool? And the artist is Dominique Brown. She's an artist and founder behind Domo Inc., a lifestyle brand and contributes art, apparel, and home decor in celebration of diversity and empowerment. And this is hers. And so I'm going to try it. it. The big thing is it looks really like, look at there, oh my gosh. Or you can even see it in the front. They are little tiny numbers. So I hope I don't make a lot of boo-boos. But, and I know it won't look as fab as that, but I'm gonna give it my best. I haven't done a paint by number since I was a kid. And um, so I think that would be really cool. And it's a cool size, you know? When I do finish it, if it's not too horrible, I'll show you. If you never see it again, it's because it came out bad and I was just too embarrassed to show. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you guys, because I'm, no, I'm not embarrassing myself that much. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to tell you is I have been practicing in my lost art of handwriting. I'm going to do some more today. I've designated Fridays as the day that I will sit and do it for a little bit. Um, and I'm just starting there because I know if I say I'm going to do it, you know, every day for five minutes, it's not going to happen. But if I say I'm going to do it once a week, that's seven days that I have to choose which day. If I don't get it to Friday, then maybe I'll do it Saturday. You know, I can keep working, but Friday is lending itself really nicely. And I'm actually really proud of my, my first attempt um, at doing it. So I'm, and I'm going to get some extra paper because I like that line. I, if I can get some exact same size, I can continue to practice like more than just the page that they give you for each letter. Um, because I need more than that. <laughs> I need like a book for each letter, but I need more paper to practice them. And then especially when I start getting into doing words, like full words with them all connected. But oh my God, if I can get, I really had pretty decent night handwriting and it's like, it's nowhere near it was in my hand. It's like your hand is not connected to your brain. It's not doing what I remember I could do. So I'm really excited that and hopeful that, you know, I can retrain that muscle and do it again. So, because I've really been enjoying um, my fountain pens and I also want to, you know, use them more than than I have so so there's that and that's it I don't have anything else to tell you guys because I think I've babbled it's always about 20 22 minutes I'm always like yeah I'm gonna go fast or whatever and it's still the same like let me know what you're reading let me how you're doing are you getting any snow are we the only ones gonna get the snow anyway I will talk to you guys soon have a great weekend I'll talk to you soon bye